what is going on guys welcome back to a new swift video in today's video we're going to be building a full featured to-do list app in swift ui popularly requested by you and uh here it is here's what we're going to be building so we've got this app we can type in a new entry so i can say go for run hit save and it adds it right there with the name and the current date the coolest thing is that it fully persists the data so if i close it it comes back to it it uh, stays and we can of course delete items once we're done with them let's be real i'm not going to run today and it uh, looks really nice in light mode dark mode whole nine yards so first and foremost destroy that like button for the youtube algorithm for uh, the video for future videos get excited hit subscribe if you're new to the channel if you're returning get xcode ready get excited let's create a swift ui to do list app all right we're gonna get started by opening up xcode and creating a new project here we're going to stick with the app template under iOS and let's go ahead and call this a Swift UI to do list. Make sure your language is Swift, your lifecycle UI kit and your interface, most importantly, Swift UI. And also make sure this use core data checkbox is checked as that's where we will be saving our actual uh, to do list entries. So go ahead and create it, stick it on your desktop. And I'm going to start by closing the preview canvas here and the attributes inspector and moving over my Xcode window. The canvas is a little finicky with core data. So we're gonna use a simulator itself. Let's go ahead and hit that run button to build and run. And we're gonna get straight away into designing the user interface. So our user interface is gonna consist of a navigation view and we are going to put a list in here and our list is gonna have two sections. The first section is going to be where the user can enter in a new item. So I'm going to give it a header title of new item here. And inside of here, we're going to want a text field. But before we do that, we're going to want another section right below it. And this is going to actually show our saved items, but I'm just going to put a text in here so we don't get an error. So let's put a horizontal stack in our first section. This section, rather this stack, is going to have a text field inside of it. The first parameter is the placeholder text or the text field. And the second parameter is a binding in which your actual text gets saved as the user enters it. So we're gonna create that state property up here called text and it's gonna be a string and it's gonna start off by default as an empty string, just like that. And right next to the text field, we are going to put a button for the user to actually tap and save whatever they have entered into the text field. We're gonna go ahead and give it a label of save, just like that. And I'm also going to put a navigation title on the actual list here. We'll go ahead and call this a to-do list just like that. Go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And your UI should look like this with a title, our text field, our save button, and this ABC down here, which will get replaced by our actual entries once we have them. So this is our stubbed out UI. Let's take a look at creating and saving actual data in core data here. So by checking that core data box when you created the project, you should have gotten this file Let's open that up and hit new entity down here. And we basically want to give this a name. I'm going to call it to do list item. Make sure you copy this as we're going to need to create a class in a moment that has the same name. Hit the plus here and we're going to give this two properties that are going to get saved. So the first one is name. Second one is created at and this one you guessed it will be a date just like that. And before we uh, move on from this file here, open up the attributes inspector and you want to change this code gen thing to manual. So basically you can have Xcode generate this stuff for you, but it doesn't really generate it nicely to be used with SwiftUI. So we make it manual and do it ourselves and it's fairly simple to actually do so. You also want to set the module to be the current product. So hit the drop down and select that current product right there. Go ahead and hit command B. You should still be able to compile. And let's go ahead and create that new to-do list item entry right here. So we're gonna hit new file. We're gonna select a Swift file and let me just paste in what we called the entity. 
go ahead and continue. And first things first, let's start by importing core data. Now we want to create a class with the same name. It needs to subclass NS managed objects so core data can use it. And it also needs to conform to identifiable so we can use this in our list in our UI because we want to list out our actual entries. Now in here, we want the two properties that we added in core data. So the first one is going to be a name and both of these need to be NS managed. So core data actually knows that these uh, map basically to the properties we added in that other file. This one's going to be a date. And we also want to put an extension on to this class here and we're going to create a handy little function called get all to do list items. And this is going to return a NS fetch request with for to do list item. And we're going to be able to use this in our UI to really easily query out our actual to do list items. And it's complaining because I haven't returned an error yet and Xcode is getting ahead of itself. So let's create a request here which is going to be of type NS fetch request. And it's going to have a type in it of to-do list item. And this is simply going to be to-do list item dot fetch request. Whoops, we want to-do list, not the actual function. We want to-do list item dot fetch request. And you can actually use a as exclamation mark to cast it as what we want it to be like that come down here and return said request. And right in between here, we need to add a sort descriptor. So we want our request to basically return the items uh, in ascending order based on date. So I'm gonna create this thing called sort right above it. And this is going to be a NS sort descriptor with a key and ascending. So the key we're going to use is created at, which is the date property name right up here. And ascending, we're going to pass in, I believe true should give it to us in the proper order. And hit command B, you should still be able to compile. And now we can actually go to our UI and finish it up. But before we do so, one thing I want to call out is if you're not familiar with core data and our app delegate by checking that core data box, you got this persistent container property. And this is how you actually communicate with core data but this isn't in our content view so how do we actually use it there well xcode is smart enough to stub it out for you already in the scene delegate but we basically do it through a property wrapper so here we have our actual uh context being created off the app delegate and here uh, swift ui is actually injecting it via a environment uh, managed object context wrapper like so and uh, before in the older Xcode versions, it didn't automatically do this for you, but now it does, which saves us time. But now in the content view, we can actually go ahead and access it. And it's a uh, environment property wrapper. And we just copied it there. I'm just gonna paste it and go ahead and give it a name. We'll call it context. And we're also gonna want one more thing in here. It's gonna be a fetch request if I'm not mistaken. And we wanna create it with a fetch request. And we can simply pass in that uh, static function we created. And this is going to return our items. And these are going to be fetch results of type to do list item, just like that. And I think we're good to go to actually show whatever is saved in our database. So hopefully we don't have any errors. In the second section we created here, we can now do a for each over items. We can say item in, which actually represents a to-do list item. So let's name this a little more appropriately. So to-do list item. This, we're going to put a VStack in here, which is going to have a, let's see, we only want a VStack, no HStack in this case. The first one is going to be to-do list item dot name. I'm going to force unwrap it because we're being lazy in our demo. And right below it, we're going to say created at Let's go ahead and give this a font of headline. And we're also gonna align this to the left, which I believe is leading. And let's go ahead and hit Command R. Let's make sure this runs and we should be able to enter and see new entries now. So bear with the simulator. All right, so it's empty. Let's put a new entry in here for create YouTube video. 
Let's go ahead and hit that save button and nothing happened because I forgot to implement the save button. So let's do this really fast. This is very simple. We're gonna say if text is not empty, we're gonna create a new entry. The way we're gonna create it is by saying let new item is a to-do list item with the context. Now keep in mind this context is this NS managed context thing in the environment property wrapper up there. We're gonna assign the name on this. So new item dot name is going to be text. New item dot created at will be the current date. And finally in a do catch statement, we're gonna say try context dot save. This actually saves the new item we created here. And uh, let's see, this is complaining about something, the error goes away. The reason we need to put it in a do catch is because this statement can throw an error and we don't wanna actually crash. What we'll do in our little example here is just print out the error if one occurs, but in a real app, you might wanna actually do something meaningful so the user knows it failed. But uh, let's go ahead and try that one more time. Here we'll say create YouTube video. Go ahead and hit save, whoops. Don't want that dictation enabled, hit save. And we should see our item pop up right below. And the cool thing is if we close and reopen the app, we should still see our item. So let's do another one here. We're gonna say get milk and groceries, hit save. One thing we might wanna do is also clear out that text field. So I'm gonna come in here and we're gonna actually say uh, after we go ahead and save and all of this is done and well, we can say text is now equal to an empty string. That way the text field doesn't stay at the previous entries. So let's go ahead and say, do paperwork, hit save. Our new entry gets added and this gets cleared out. So we're looking good. So how do we delete items? Because what if I finished one of these items? So SwiftUI makes that super simple. All we need to basically do is on our for each, which is right here, we can give this a on delete handler. We wanna first get the item out. So I'll say guard let item is going to be, rather first we can say guard let index will be index set dot first. Just like that. If we can't get it, we're gonna go ahead and return. Then we're gonna get the item to delete will be basically in our items, we're gonna get the index that we just got up above. And to delete it, it's super simple. We're gonna say context.delete, item to delete. And similar to what we did up above, we're gonna say try context.save. Whoops, this should be a do rather. Getting ahead of myself. And this one should be try context.save. And if an error occurs, we're gonna be lazy. And once again, we're gonna come in here and print it out. So go ahead and hit that run button once more. And you should be able to swipe to delete these items now. So just like that, we can delete that one, delete that one. We're gonna close the app and come back to it. We should only have that one. We're gonna change it to dark mode with a command shift A. Looking really nice, really slick. We're gonna select this and add a new entry. We're gonna come in here and say, upload to do list app video it save, it adds it. So there you have it. That is a full fledged to-do list app built with Swift UI. It looks like quite a bit of code because we haven't really cleaned up our uh, content view here. We could in theory make uh, the stuff in the for each here into its own uh, view. We can also move this to its own function, but I'm not gonna do that in this video. But just to do a quick recap in our view here, we've got three properties, an environment for the context, the fetch request for the actual list of to-do list items we query out, and a state property to hold our entered text in the text field. We've got a list here in a navigation view with a section and a button to save a new item. We've got a for each here to basically show the items we query out of core data, and that does it for our content view. And in our to-do list item here, we created a NS managed object made it identifiable so we could use it in the list, popped in our two properties we put into the entity, and we added this nifty little function to handle actual uh, querying out. And one thing I'll show you here is if we change uh, this true to be false, and if we spell it correctly, 
and run it, you'll see that the items actually inverse here in order. So I believe now you'll get the uh, latest created one at the top. So let's go ahead and do another item here and add it. And you see that it gets added to the top. So basically using sort descriptors to change the way this gets ordered is super easy and uh, pretty nifty. So last thing that we did was in this XE data model, we just added our entity with that button at the bottom, called it a to-do list item, and popped in our three properties here. And don't forget that you'll need to change your code gen in the attributes inspector to be manual. And uh, just as a pro tip, just set your module to be uh, the current product so everything works as expected. And uh, there you have it. That's all I've got for you guys today. Full-fledged Swift UI to-do list app. If you haven't hit the like button already, make sure to do so. Helps out with the channel. Helps me know that the video was helpful and make uh, similar videos in the future. Comment if you have any questions, suggestions, feedback. Love hearing from you guys. Uh, anything at all, drop a, drop a hello down there. Love replying to you all. And uh, make sure you hit subscribe and that notification bell to stay tuned and join the iOS Academy community. Catch you guys in the next video.